welcome to this episode of Batavia Spotlight, where we get to know more about community organizations and businesses here in Batavia and in our local communities. I'm Ellen Huxtable, your host, so let's get started. And I'm very pleased to have Bill Otter, who is the owner of Tudor Doctor, which is a relatively new business here in the Fox Valley. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for having us, Ellen. Tell us about Tudor Doctor, what you do, to whom, and how. Tutor Doctor is a uh, one-on-one in-home tutoring service. And so our primary focus is to help students, really mostly in the K through 12 uh, grade levels, be successful in the classroom. And that can be uh, helping them with their academic subjects, it can be helping them with their organizational skills, um, you know, planning skills, all those kinds of activities so that we can help them build or rebuild their confidence so they can be successful right there in the classroom and perform at grade level and realize that they can be successful at whatever they want to do. So do you cover all topics and all subjects or is there certain ones that are, are uh, preferred? No, well, that's a great question. We actually do cover all, all subjects in all grade levels. We also provide ACT and SAT prep. Okay. We're, we've helped uh, college students in college level courses, uh, graduate level entrance exams. Um, we can we can cover a lot of things. It's one of the one of the uh, benefits of coming to Tutor Doctor is <clears throat> once I meet with a family, I meet with a student to understand what their needs are. Then I can select a, a tutor from our team to match with that uh, student. And that tutor match process is one of the things that I think makes us more unique at Tutor Doctor. And so you're looking for people then that are, have a, a need, and the parent will identify that need. And then you work with them to find the individual. And I guess it's, it's not only because of the uh, academic qualifications, but also a personality fit? Absolutely. That's, uh, we, we start off with meeting with all of our families with a free consultation. And we sit down to understand exactly the way you stated it, their academic need, a little bit about their learning style for that student, and absolutely the personality. And then once we go through that process, then I go through the process of figuring out who the right tutor from our team uh, would be to help that student be successful as quickly as we possibly can. Because again, we want to we want to build their confidence and make sure that they realize they actually can do this mm -hmm. and they can be successful in their classroom. Uh, I love all of our families, but if I've made them a lifetime client, then I probably haven't done my job very well. Absolutely. And uh, so as I go through that process, I'm thinking about who the potential tutors are on our team who could support that student. Do I need somebody who's going to draw that personal personality out of that student? Do I need somebody to kind of put some um, some boundaries on that student uh, as they're That's as they're different. overly <laughs> excited, and that all requires a different a different tutor. And not all students need a tutor, but um, but some can benefit from that, and uh, and and that's where we get to come in. How do you select your tutors? Our tutors come from all walks of life. Some of them naturally are teachers, mm -hmm. certified teachers serving right here in in our local communities and our school districts. Um, and they're doing a great job there, but they enjoy getting that one-on-one -on -one connection that is right. much, much more difficult for them to do in the regular classroom That's setting. True. And so we're fortunate to have a number of teachers who work for us. But we also get tutors who are professionals that have um, an academic, you know, have a, 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 a academic skill mm -hmm. and an ability to convey that skill to a student. And others are retirees who in the, are in the same category. Mm -hmm. They've got all this experience, they've got an academic skill, and they also have a way to connect with that student. And having all three varieties of tutors allows a wide variety of personality types to go back and provide that assistance for that student because it might be that we just need to present the subject in a slightly different manner and one of these tutors would be able to provide that. So then you do talk with the parents and you, you meet with the student in advance as well? Y yes, absolutely. And um, particularly for our younger students in the elementary and middle school age, we do an activity with them oh. and when we sit down and it'll be, you, it'll be related to the, uh, the area that the parents have highlighted. Mm -hmm. And we'll do that activity just so that we can kind of establish a starting point. Okay. And that, um, that's a useful item for our tutors. It also gives, starts to give me some insight on what our students' needs might be. 
they may have called us for assistance with math. Middle school math is uh, unfortunately one of those stumbling blocks yes. for a lot of students. And for us as parents, that's a difficult thing for some of us to support as well. So we'll start out with that. But through the course of that conversation, I will listen for those other cues that the family might bring up that maybe there's some other areas that we could help the student with. And it, even though our focus will be on math, if I pick up on those other cues, then I'll make sure that I've got a tutor that has the ability to reach out and touch some of those other areas. And as time permits, beyond math, we'll try and support that family in those er academic areas as well. Because really, we're just trying to, again, reduce the stress level of the family and build the confidence of the student. So one of the things I hear you talking about is communication. That you, as the owner of the tutor doctor organization, are personally involved in the placements, you're personally involved with your tutors, and you're personally involved with the families, which is sometimes you might not necessarily get with some of the uh, some of the organizations that might be out there. Yeah, I, I absolutely think that's one of the things that makes us unique. Uh, I, I do meet with every single family, and I meet with every tutor, and, and I agonize over the match between family and tutor, uh, because I want both of them to have a positive experience. Both of them are looking for something that the family is looking for help academically build that student confidence the tutor is looking to give back <clears throat> yes they're getting paid but in most cases there's some sort of a um, uh, a motivation from that tutor to want to give back want to help students be successful themselves and and that success is what powers me i get to see uh, the session reports after every single time a tutor meets with a student, they uh, they get to they write a little uh, short segment on what the students worked on, and the feedback that that I get from the families and the tutors after those that that energy is what propels me because I get to see all the success. Well, that's great, and it's it's home based, which is something that's different. Now, if somebody was interested in in learning more about that, if they have a student that they want to just talk to you about and see what services you offer and how it might fit, how do they get in touch with you? The easiest way to get a hold of us is going to our website, www.tutordoctor.com. They can put their zip code in, and that will get them uh, right right to me. Um, they can chat to us on that. They can submit a form. They can also call us. Uh, 630-313-2037, or if that's too hard to remember, they can call 1-800-4-TUTORS. And uh, they can give us a call, that'll give them an opportunity to get uh, the initial introduction about our services, and then they can get to me directly. Well, excellent, thank you so much for joining us. I hope this was very useful and beneficial to a lot of the, the families that are out there, especially with summer here now. So I appreciate you coming and telling us about Tutor Doctor. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And now we'll take a brief time out to hear from some of our sponsors. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tom Wangler, president of Confident Air. Regular maintenance can prolong the life of your furnace and keep your energy costs to a minimum. Plus, there's less of a chance of a breakdown on a cold winter night. Your furnace needs proper care and attention to keep it running smoothly, so you don't end up paying too much for heating during the cold winter months, or worse yet, with deadly carbon monoxide poisoning. We recommend an annual inspection to ensure safe operation. Confident Air, your trusted home comfort professionals since 1992. Welcome back to Batavia Spotlight. I'm being joined now by Joe King, who is the owner of Physical Therapy Advantage. So thank you for joining us, Joe. Thanks for having me. So tell us about Physical Therapy Advantage and what you do, to whom, and how, and all those other wonderful things. Um, sure. Uh, we're an independent outpatient orthopedic clinic uh, located in North Aurora, the southeast corner of Randall and Oak in the Clock Tower Plaza. Um, we just celebrated our 12th anniversary slash birthday. How Happy anniversary. Thank you very much. Um, we uh, basically treat any outpatient orthopedic injury. So if you have a muscle strain or joint sprain, say from working in the yard to being a weekend warrior to sports injuries, work comp injuries, maybe some balance and dizziness uh, issues as well. Hmm. We treat all kinds. Um, and as far as the clientele we see or age range yeah. is anywhere from an elementary school kid up to their grandmas or great grandmas and great grandpas. How does somebody know when it's time to come and see somebody like you or just sort of wait and hope it gets better? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, you know, typically people always wait and see a few days to see how things are. 
if there's swelling or pain and if it's getting worse or not. But typically, I'm a little bit biased. I say come in right away when you have yeah. an ache and pain. But uh, typically, the, the best thing to do is wait that two to three day period. Maybe you're, you're icing it, you're taking some Advil, you're seeing how things are feeling. But if things stay the same as far as pain-wise goes or gets worse, at that point in time, you really should probably get to a, get to a medical professional, whether you're coming to see a physical therapist or see your doctor at that point, so you don't let it linger and get too too bad. Now, before we started the taping, you were telling me about there's a change in how people can access physical therapy services like yours. Yes, last August, um, Governor Rauner actually uh, signed into law, we, something we've been working on for about 25 years, <laughs> is uh, direct access or full direct access, where we are now allowed to evaluate and treat a client that comes in without having a physician's referral or prescription. So if you get hurt on Sunday, you can go see your physical therapist on Monday and begin that process right away. They can evaluate you and treat you. In oh. the past, we could evaluate, but then they would have to go back and see the physician, and there might be a two to three week lag time or even more before they see a physician, x-ray, MRI, see a specialist, mm -hmm. before they come back for physical therapy. But right now, they can basically start right away, be treated right away, and hopefully decrease the amount of pain they're in, but more importantly sometimes is also decrease the amount of work days that they would miss. So the, the ancillary services you mentioned, like the MRI or any other testing that needs to be done, is that something that they would need, still need to go back to their doctor to get the approval to get those t tests run? Yes, so we don't okay. uh, prescribe those ourselves. If uh, we feel that there's a need to see a picture of a a bone or a joint mm -hmm. or a muscle that an MRI would be beneficial to, to help us further that uh, treatment, we definitely refer them back to their physician right away to get that taken care of. Um, but most times it's not, and most of the time doctors are not doing those uh, tests right away sometimes. So they're mm -hmm. like, okay, let's just wait and see anyway. Yeah. So we're able to start that process and hopefully decrease the backlog of the clients going and seeing their doctors and having to wait. Yeah, yeah. So now if, if the patients are coming directly to you, not every insurance is necessarily going to cover it. So are you able to help them with that then to determine whether this is something that they, in their case, they need to go back to their doctor? Yeah, there are going to be some insurances that are still going to require the, uh, the client to have a prescription before they start. And we'll know that ahead of time. We're able to verify those benefits okay. and help them out with that process. Uh, but the majority of the insurances are following this because they see the value of now, what kind of modalities do you use? What do you do with people when they come and see you? Um, it's a great question. We, uh, we're a hands-on clinic, basically. We're a staff of manual therapists. We train with our hands. We do a lot of continuing education using our hands to help people heal. Uh, so we do a lot of manual therapy, whether it be soft tissue or various hands-on treatments, joint mobilization, stretching, that sort of thing, besides a lot of exercise prescription. And we do a lot of uh, training. We call it neuromuscular training, but basically retraining the muscles to hmm. do the right things. A lot of times uh, people have been compensating mm -hmm. and using muscles abnormally for so long it's become a habitual pattern. Right. So we're helping them break that habitual pattern and teach the muscles how to work correctly. But we do have traditional modalities as well, where an ultrasound if it's needed, electrical stimulation if it's needed as well. Uh, we do a, a type of treatment called augmentative soft tissue augmentative soft tissue mobilization, excuse me. Easy for you to say. Yeah, it's tough. We call it ASTEM, that's why I don't uh -huh. say it all the time. Where we're using a specifically designed set of instruments to break down some uh, fibrosis and scar tissue okay, yeah. uh, and restart the healing process. So we'll use that on a number of patients who have been dealing with um, chronic injuries, especially someone that's maybe in a, been on the assembly line and oh, working in repetitive yeah. movements all the time. They've damaged those muscles and tendons and they've just not healed correctly. Mm -hmm. So then I, I would expect that you're also able to, to advise people on how to prevent re-injury, how to change what they're doing so that they don't see you again for the same thing soon. Exactly, and that's the main goal that we have is to basically educate our clients about what's going on with them and hopefully help them be able to manage it and then take care of it for the long run. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, is physical therapy the services you provide? I would expect that there, there's probably more than one visit before people can get back to being comfortable functioning, but it probably isn't like a forever after kind of thing, I would expect in most cases. Our typical client is going to be seen probably twice a week for four to six, maybe eight weeks. Okay. Um, and then after that, we will put them on a comprehensive home program and devise programs based on what their need is that they will continue to do. Most of the time, they're going to do it for maybe two to six months. Okay. And then 
it maybe hopefully will become a lifelong process mm -hmm. where they may not do that exact same program for that for the rest of their life. They may go in and evolve into other exercises that hey, I know I need to stretch, I know I need to strengthen, yeah. and I will continue this kind of basically process of I'm going to be healthy and exercising on a more regular basis. So it builds into their lifestyle then. Exactly. That's great. So if somebody's looking for a, a, a physical therapy group to to help them, what should they be looking for? What, 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 how, how do they pick one group versus another? Wow. Um, some people go by insurance. Some people go by logistics of where they're working or, or living. Um, more importantly, you have to find the right place. Like you're finding a dentist, your doctor, you have to find somebody that fits for you personality-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to find the group that, or staff or therapists that are going to listen to you, that are going to provide you with the best customer service that they possibly can, and that you feel you're at home, you're at ease. And that's what we try to create at our clinic is a culture of healing, where those clients are feeling taken care of from the minute they enter the door to the minute they walk back out of the door, and if it's after the sixth visit, if it's after the twelfth visit, whatever it may be, that they felt like they were in the right place and they succeeded. So if people wanted to find out more about your services or they're having an ache or a pain that isn't going away, how do they find you? Um, they can go to our website, www.ptadvantagepc.com. It's kind of long, sorry about okay. that. That's okay. Um, they can call our clinic at 630-892-8003 and they can ask to speak with one of our staff, one of our physical therapy staff, answer, or ask any questions they want to. We can set up a time for um, them to come in and talk to us, do a free consultation. Whatever they would need, we just want to be a community resource for people, answer the questions, and hopefully at that point in time, they feel comfortable enough, they may want to come, stop in and actually uh, do some therapy. Thank you so much for, for educating us on this and for spending time with us, so thank you, Joe. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And now we'll take a brief time out to hear from some of our sponsors. We'll be right back. Downtown Batavia, always moving by nature. Recreation, nature, the arts, specialty shops, restaurants and services. Downtown is everyone's neighborhood. Come, celebrate, meet friends, Unwind. See you downtown. Welcome back to Batavia Spotlight. I'm joined now by Roger Bryce, who is a volunteer with SPS America, which is the Suicide Prevention Services Hotline. So thank you very much for joining us, Roger. It's a joy <clears throat> to be here. Thank you for asking. Tell us about what SPS America is and does and who you serve. SPS America is one of actually very few organizations across the country that specifically focus on suicide prevention, intervention, and postvention. Okay. And, and we do a number of things. One of the primary things that we do is run the hotline mm -hmm. where I volunteer. We have lots of volunteers, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. We answer two different hotlines. We have a local line, which is 630-482-9696, uh, but we're also part of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. We answer that line as well in conjunction with call centers all across the country. And most people know that number. It's 1-800-273-TALK or 1-800-273-8255. That's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Mm -hmm. So we answer both of those. My goodness. Now, this is a 24-7 service that is out there for people? The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is 24-7, 365. Um, we're always looking for volunteers in our call center, so our local number is answered when we have volunteers, which is most of the time, but, mm -hmm. but not always. But the 1-800-273-8255 is national and 24-7. Now, I would expect that people that are answering these phones you must have gone through extensive training to help you serve the people that that are in need of your services? It's 80 hours of training, about half of it in classroom, the other half actually on the hotline. Mm. The first half of that second half, because uh, I'm a trainer now, I've been okay. there for 16 years, uh, first half the new volunteer will listen to me answer calls and then we will debrief after those, what worked, what didn't, uh, what was the volunteer comfortable with or uncomfortable with, talk through those things. And then after uh, about four weeks, 
and each shift is four hours, so four four hour shifts. We'll, we'll reverse roles. Mm -hmm. The volunteer will begin to take calls, and I'll listen in. And I'm there to help if they need, if they get themselves into trouble, but then when they're done with a call, we'll debrief that, what worked, what didn't, what made a volunteer comfortable or uncomfortable, and, and then we go on to the next call. Mm -hmm. Do the volunteers on the hotline ever get in a situation that you are so over your head that something is, is going to transpire? It happens occasionally, um, but, but not too often. There have been a, a couple of times with a new volunteer uh, one poor volunteer, the very first call that she took when we reversed roles was a, was a person who was actively suicidal and, oh. and she was overwhelmed by it and I, I took over that call. Yeah. Uh, but generally that doesn't happen very often. We've, we've trained them pretty well after they've listened to us for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So when you have somebody on the, on the phone and somebody's called in, they're obviously seeking help, they're seeking yes. support. How do you do that? I mean, how do you, you get somebody who is clearly at a very vulnerable point in life and get them through that vulnerability and hopefully to a position of greater stability or, 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 greater, or greater comfort. With new volunteers, I always say just remember in the end it's just a conversation between two human beings. Hmm. And just be curious, just be curious about them and their life and what's going on and, and validate uh, and, and listen from you know deep deep listening that's what it's really all about now we do use a generally a methodology called assist mm -hmm. advanced suicide intervention skills training mm -hmm. but basically what that is if you're calling me I spend as much time as I need to build a relationship with you tell me what's going on what's making life so difficult mm -hmm. and then we validate that we never say to people, well, they shouldn't be feeling that way. Or mm -hmm. that, it's the way they feel. Mm -hmm. So we learn as much as we can. And then often, especially for somebody who is actively suicidal, mm -hmm. and it, that's a small percentage of our calls. Most people who call are just looking for some relief from an emotional stress or something like that. But somebody mm -hmm. who's actively suicidal, we look for something in the conversation uh, about why they might want to live. Just as an example, many years ago I took a, a call from a, from a young man uh, who was actively thinking about suicide and, and we got into that conversation and said, so why, why would you want to go on? And he said, I have two of the most beautiful daughters. Oh. In which case, in, in that moment in my mind, the call was over. Yeah. Because we knew, I knew. Yeah. The direction forward and why we were going to, how we were going to get this man safe to the next moment. And that's our role on the hotline. We don't cure people. Mm -hmm. We don't fix people. We help people get over, you said it so well earlier, over that emotional hump. Uh, we just get them to the next day, to the next moment. Uh, because as you know, life changes. Oh yes. And what might be horrible today, tomorrow, could be completely different. And as we say, suicide um, is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Mm -hmm. So that's what we work on. And what I didn't have an appreciation for until we were talking about this is that it's not just for people who are in that active suicidal state. It's for people who realize that, that they're in an emotional, uh, vulnerable position. And to, so before you're, you're actively thinking suicide, call. It's called a suicide yes. prevention hotline, but call early, it says my... Absolutely. It, the vast majority of our calls are just, are exactly that. It's just, I'm really struggling right now. I just need someone to talk to. I need someone who will listen to me. Too often in, in, in our society, people have, have nobody who will listen to them. All they want to do is try to fix. Mm -hmm. and we don't do that on the hotline. I mean, we're not going to fix you. We're going to try to help understand and help you understand how you can get to, the, to that next moment. Are there any patterns that you've seen over the time you've been doing the hotline? Any changes in the profiles of the people that call? Or is it pretty much always the same? You know, I'm only there four hours a week. That's, mm -hmm. our, that's our typical volunteer uh, requirement. So it's difficult to say. I have been there 16 years. I, I estimate I've taken 10,000 phone calls in that period of time. But I, I can't say that I see a, a real a trend one way or the other. Now, the statistics show that there have been a trend over 20 years. I mean, suicide is up. 
Suicide is up uh, across almost all demographics. It's certainly up amongst our young people. Mm -hmm. Between 15 and 24, suicide is, is often considered the, the second leading cause of death. Accidents are first, and often suicide, depending on how you count, is the second leading cause of death for our young people. Um, and that's on, that's on the rise. So if people are in a position that they need to have somebody, like you said, listen, for, listen to them and help them, how do people find you? You mentioned the numbers earlier, but can you mention the numbers again that they can call? Absolutely. Um, let, me, let me give several. The, the two hotline numbers, our local number is 630-406, uh, or 630, I'm sorry, 630-482-9696. Our administrative line is almost the same. If you want to just call SPS, the administrative line is 630-482-9699. The National Lifeline is 1-800-273-TALK or 1-800-273-8255. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us and for telling us about the Suicide Prevention Hotline. And I hope that people realize that this is a service that's out there to please use it, to please use it to uh, get through some of those difficult times. Absolutely. So thank you. That's why we're there. Thank you. And thanks for tuning into Batavia Spotlight. Remember, you can watch us on Comcast Channel 17, at t Universe Channel 99, or on our website, www.mybatv.com. You can also go to our YouTube channel, which is BATV 1017. I'm your host, Ellen Huxtable, and we'll see you again next time. If you have any questions or comments, please contact us at 630-937-5413 or email us at info at mybatv.com. Have a wonderful day.